Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A little while ago, Skylum Software released an update to Luminar Neo that they called Feature Complete. That was version 1.1.0. Subsequently, they did release another update, 1.1.1, which included one minor new feature that I'll talk about in a moment. In today's video, I want to talk about what do they mean by Feature Complete and what are these features that they're referring to and I also want to talk about what I hope Skylum Software does with Luminar Neo going forward. Now let's talk about Feature Complete. You may remember that Skylum Software announced Luminar Neo, I believe in like September of 2022, and they mentioned that it would be available around the holiday season. It didn't end up coming out till sometime in January, but they did say it would be available around the holiday season. And eventually, it would have all these new features that would make it unique to Luminar AI. But they did say when it is released around the holiday season, it's not going to have all those new features yet, but they will be introducing those new features with updates. And with version 1.1.0, it now has all those new features that they promised it would have back in September of last year. So they're calling it feature complete. It does not mean that they're, they've stopped developing it and they're not going to be adding any new features to it. It just means that everything they promised it would have, it now has. And now they're going to work on it some more and add more to it. So that's what it means by feature complete. Now, what are these features? Well, let's talk about these new features that kind of make it unique to Luminar AI. Let's go to the edit panel first. Uh, this main new feature that many people were disappointed about Luminar AI because Luminar AI didn't have it is Luminar Neo has layers. And you can see over here on this image, there are two layers. There's a layer that is the model and then there's the layer of the background. The background is an image I took and the model is uh, an Adobe stock image that I used to put the model in the scene. Okay, that's great. So it has layers now. And with version 1.1.1, they added one very minor feature with layers in that you could duplicate a layer. You could right-click on a layer and duplicate it, and then you could actually remove it as well or delete it. So um, that is a minor feature that was added after the feature complete version came out. Now, it's nice that we have layers, all right? But what I hope they do with layers very soon is they add the ability for us to either flatten it or to add a stamp layer on top because for example let me click on the model let me go over now i want to process the image all right so i'm going to go over the develop uh, tool and let's say i just take exposure all the way down see how it's only affecting the layer with the model and s similarly if i click on the background layer and i go over to any tool We'll just go to the develop tool for this demonstration. It only affects the background. So what if after you do a composite like this, you want to process the entire image, every pixel in it at the same time? Well, you need either to be able to flatten these layers or to put a stamp layer on top. So I hope they do that very, very soon to enhance layers and make it more functional. Now, one of those other new features, or let's go to this image and we'll go to edit. Uh, is the power line removal feature. Uh, that was available in Luminar Neo right when it was first introduced. Uh, if you go over to the erase tool, you'll see it's right here, remove power lines. I'm gonna click on it. Couple things here. Uh, it does a fine job if your power lines are pretty isolated against a sky and you don't have anything busy behind it like trees, like I have here. Otherwise, it will not remove the power lines very well that happen to be in front of the trees. Like this power line in front of this tree, it's not going to remove it. The power line over here, it's not going to remove it all. And even up here, it's not going to remove it all. It does okay in front of clouds. It does okay in front of skies. And I would venture to guess that if it was in front of a blank wall, it would do okay in front of the blank wall. But it won't do a good job. And you can see it didn't. Uh, so you can see it left this chunk of power line here, a little piece of the power line here, and a power line up here. That's one thing I hope they improve. They need to improve that so it just works better. Uh, also, 
it took a long time, didn't it? It took a really long time, and I have a very fast computer. So I hope they speed that up. Now, to get rid of the rest of the power line, you'll have to erase it. So you could get, let's say, a brush and make the brush tool a little smaller and paint on the power line. But this is actually problematic because it doesn't really do a very good job. I'll just do this one. I'll click Erase. And you can see, eh, it actually made a layer out of me. It did okay. But often, all too often, it would just pop a hole in the trees as well. It would take out like tree branches. It actually is doing pretty well. But I think you'll find, and those of you that have used this in similar situations, I think you'll agree and comment below that it doesn't always work very well. And it kind of messed up this tree up here. So they need to improve it. It's nice it has it. They need to improve it. Another new feature that it has that makes it unique to Luminar AI is the remove dust spots. Now, I really don't have an image handy that has dust spots on it, but the little bit I've used this, this works great. So if you have an image that has dust spots or sensor spots, anything with little specks that you normally would use the erase tool to click on and then erase, you could just click this button and it will automatically remove them. And I found that that actually works pretty well. Um, so I think that's good. Another new feature they added, which came out later, it wasn't introduced right when the product came out initially, was uh, Mask AI. Now, most of these tools, almost all of them, will have a feature called Mask AI. For example, I'll just open up the color tool. We'll go to Masking. You can see there's Mask AI. Every single one of these has it. Let's go to the Develop. Go to Masking. Mask AI. If I click on that, what it will do is Luminar Neo will examine the image and it will find the various elements in the image. It will find the sky, it will find the trees, it will find the water, it will find the ground. And when it finds them, it will list them. So it found the sky, it found the flora, I believe that's the trees, it found the water, it found the mountains, I believe it's just these cliffs off in the background, and it found natural ground. That's going to be probably this ground over here. So it found all the various elements. This allows you then to just process those elements independently of everything else. Now, what I would like the, to see them do with this going forward is, first of all, if you hover over sky, I would like it to show you the overlay. It won't show you the overlay until you click on any of these. So I click on sky and you can see there's the overlay. The other thing I would like them to do is to refine this a little bit. You can see how it didn't find in between these trees very well and around these trees over here. So it's, it's just not quite perfect. Now their sky replacement tool works great. Uh, so I think that technology is there. They just haven't uh, have it all coded into this application yet. So we'll turn off the sky for a minute and we'll go to flora. And again, I think flora is the trees. Yeah, it's the trees, and that's okay. Got part of the sky, though, didn't it? So we'll turn that off. The water. Takes a second. There we go. Missed the water back in here, but uh, granted, that is difficult. But I hope, again, they hope they refine it. Uh, mountains. Should be back in here. Yep, that's it. And natural ground. So the idea here is that you would use this uh, mask AI to, you know, fix something specific, excuse me, in your image. Turn that off for a minute. And you could do more than one. Like I could do flora and water and mountains and give it a second and it will select all those and I could adjust all those at once. But let's just say, let's do sky because that's easy to see. You click on that and make that active. It's active. Then you could go to adjustments and any adjustments you do will just affect that. But you can see how it didn't select in between these trees very well over here. So it's a nice feature. I don't know of any other application that has anything similar. I just hope they further refine it and make it so that it better selects these different elements in a scene. Uh, let's see, what else does it have? Let's go back to the catalog and let's go to um, this image. This is an image, uh, it's a stock image I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, I clipped her out of the background with this uh, new feature called Portrait Background Removal that is unique to Luminar Neo. It actually works pretty well. Let me reset this. I'll go to Actions, Revert to Original, and you can see there's the original stock image. Now, 
to clip her out of the background, uh, portrait background and removal is found in layer properties. And it's in masking. And it's right here, portrait background. You click on it and it will examine the image and find the background and find what isn't the background. And it did it. What I hope they do going forward is I hope they have some type of overlay on here so you could see what it selected, just so you know. Now you can click on remove, and once you click on remove, it will remove it. And it may or may not work great. And it almost worked great. It just has this big chunk right here. Now our hair looks a little funky, but if you had seen the video where I actually demoed this tool, I used this exact image. Her hair is actually fine. She's just a blonde and she has some flyaway hair and it's just kind of looks funny. But once I dropped her in that other scene, it looked perfectly fine. But we do have to get rid of this. So then we would get the refinements brush. This is considered background. So you would click on background. You have three different things here. The transition area, which is the edge around her body. It, then the object, which is her. And the transition. Uh, or I'm sorry, and then the background. So we need to make paint this background so that Luminar Neo that knows that that little chunk of whatever that is up there is background. And you would just paint on it. And it's a bit delayed. It's a bit slow, but it will put that blue overlay on there, which indicates background, right? And then it, you can see it got rid of it. So now she is clipped out, right? And then you could go back to properties and you could see she's clipped out just fine. Then what you would do is you would export this as a PNG with uh, transparency and then you could take her and I did this in that video as a matter of fact I'll have that video listed in the description below this video if you're interested in how to do this and then you could take her and drop her into another scene like we did here just like that so these are the new features that they touted back last year that make it feature complete and what I hope they still continue to do with these new features now overall with Luminar Neo what else do I want it to have beside these improvements to these, quote, new features? Well, first of all, the catalog itself. The catalog itself is very rudimentary. Uh, you basically could just favorite an image or reject an image. By clicking on that little heart, you favorited it. Or you could right-click on the image, go to Set Flag, and you have uh, keyboard shortcuts, PX and U, to favorite it, reject it, or unmark it. That's really all you could do. You don't have color labels. You don't have any keywording uh, available. You can't change the name of the image. Uh, nothing like that. So I hope they further develop the catalog tool or the catalog section of Luminar Neo so that um, we could do more stuff with it. You know, uh, maybe have um, you know the the ability to um, sort the images by like a color label or something like that. So I'd like to see that be introduced as well. Now presets, Luminar Neo, of course, has presets. You may remember that Luminar AI had templates. Templates are presets. I mean, let's not kid anyone. It's presets, right? But if you bought or developed presets in Luminar AI, those presets aren't compatible in Luminar Neo. But they did say that they would be making a conversion tool to convert the Luminar AI templates to Luminar Neo presets, that conversion tool still is not available. So that is a feature, I think, but they need to make that available. So hopefully they come out with that soon. The other thing is Luminar AI's catalog, that is basically all your edits and all that stuff, is not compatible with Luminar Neo's catalog. So all those edits you did in Luminar AI aren't recognized by Luminar Neo, but they did say that they would be coming out with a conversion tool to convert a Luminar AI catalog to Luminar Neo. So Luminar Neo would recognize all your Luminar AI edits. Hopefully they come out with that very soon. Um, that I think is very important for a lot of people because a lot of people were really invested in Luminar AI and they felt like they had the rug pulled out from under them when they uh, started, you know, they said they're coming out with a new app, Luminar Neo. And that kind of leads me to my final wish, is they don't do that again. That Luminar Neo is it. They're going to develop Luminar Neo like Adobe has developed Lightroom, right? They're just developing Lightroom Classic and developing it and developing it and developing it. And when a new version of Lightroom Classic comes out where the old catalog wasn't available, right off the bat, it converts the old catalog to the new catalog 
so that you could just seamlessly keep using Lightroom Classic. I want Skylum Software to do that moving forward with Luminar Neo. Just you know, do those things I said, be able to convert those templates to presets and be able to convert the AI catalog to the Neo catalog, get that done, then keep developing Luminar Neo, make it better and better and better, faster and faster and faster and less buggy and less buggy and less buggy. And I think you'll have a really happy customer base. Um, let me know your thoughts, what you hope they do with Luminar Neo in the comments below. And thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.